Hello, pilots. Today, I'm flying the Su-27SM once again. Let's analyze how this aircraft can be a beast when mastered and flown correctly. As you're watching this video, I'm probably already working on more content with the new updates aircraft. I've seen many requests to play with the new planes. Don't worry, I'll provide a detailed analysis of the vehicles that are relevant to my channel's audience. Also, let me know if you'd like to see a CAS video with the Su-34 in ground battles. Now let's get back to the video. After securing a good spot, I start positioning myself for an attack. Remember, positioning and battlefield awareness are key elements when initiating risky plays. Your RWR can provide a lot of useful information in moments like this. If you see a launch on the horizon, or if your RWR screams a bit louder than usual, you turn around and defend against the missile until another opportunity arises to initiate a new attack. I know many enemies are to the right, so I'll try to keep flying in the same area, always flying at an angle to them. Never directly this way, I can easily go into defense whenever necessary. No matter how many missiles are fired, at the right altitude, position, and speed, it's always possible to defend yourself. Situations like this require a calm mind. It's all about locking onto the right target and turning in the right direction. As you saw at close range, a flanker can still give trouble to even a J-10, which is at the top of the food chain for close range combat. I played very aggressively at the start of this match because there weren't many enemies at high altitude. This allowed me to start however I wanted, even with a less capable platform in BVR. This is why BVR monsters like the F-14 or F-15 are so strong when piloted by skilled players. They dictate how much freedom the opposing team will have to start the match. It's rare for the other team to have the liberty to create plays as they're always under heavy pressure. As you can see, when BVR combat is nearing its end, any missile becomes dangerous and should never be underestimated.
What defines a good flanker pilot is this. You can never initiate fights, but you have the ability to punish all the pressure applied to your team. You should always aim to fight around the fur balls. Being in the middle of them will most likely get you shot down. Always attacking and repositioning. You eat attacks for breakfast and take good positions for lunch. The big mistake the enemies make is trying to attack the same target all at once when there are so many allies nearby. If they played by baiting and cating my team, maybe they could still turn the situation around. But that's too advanced for the average player. The third game is a down tier match, and let me tell you, these top tier games with 12.7 aircraft are the true wolf in sheep's clothing because we face the Fakur, and in my opinion, the Fakur 90 is the most dangerous missile in the top tier right now. If you play aggressively in the early game, making a frontal route against the enemy team, you've probably already died to one of these. So I'm going to show you the route I use to avoid this danger. Pay attention to the positioning I maintain in relation to my team. The way both teams are positioned, the furball is going to happen exactly to my right, so I can't start defending there. If the furball happens while I'm defending, the worst could happen. Just like these first three kills, all the other kills from here on out are through opportunism. Where I see enemies pressuring my team, and I need to be there at the right moment to react and counterattack.
In this fourth match, the planes flying high did a good job, and I spent a lot of time defeating the missiles kinetically and repositioning. But my team also played well enough to handle the lack of pressure we had in the BVR arena. Now it's time to collect the reward after so much patience. As you could see throughout the video, positioning is a mind game, and it requires much more effort than it seems, because one second between a mistake and a correct move can make your team win or lose. Now I'll leave this match for you to think for yourselves. If you have any doubts at any point, feel free to ask in the comments, marking the time in the video, and I will explain why I made a certain decision. Let's see if you learned something from the man here.
Well, gentlemen, that's it for today. Do you agree or disagree with anything I said? Is there something that works better for you? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. Until next time, Karma out.